Good morning to you all. Value creation and now navigating stability towards dynamic growth. Our chief guest at this inaugural ceremony, Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe, the governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Our Keynote speaker, Professor Dale Pinto, President and the Chair of the Board of CPA Australia, and John Curtin, Distinguished Professor of the Curtin Law School. Our guest of honor, Mr. Heshana Kuruppu, President of SAFA and President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. Our Vice President, Mr. Henaika Bandara, Council Members, Past Council Members, Distinguished Invitees, President of the OPA, Ladies and Gentlemen. Let me welcome you to the 20th CMA National Management Accounting Conference 2024 on the theme Navigating Stability Towards Dynamic Growth. During the last few years, we have been discussing topics on the crisis situation, last year on the debt optimization, and I'm indeed happy that today we have not only speakers, but speakers who have achieved success in bringing stability to the economy. I know that our chief guest was last year there at the conference at the and was telling us about what about is required to be what done, what action is being taken, what are the recommendations of the IMF, and how it should be carried out. So in fact, you can see for today, see for the today, action that has been carried out. That is the most important thing. As professional accountants, As professional we know that it is the action that, that will bring the, the results. Not only normal action, but back with professional knowledge, skills, and competency. That's how we achieve results. You all know the grave problems that we have faced. And of course, I don't have to go into detail, but it all depends on the professionalism, the skills, the knowledge, and how they are carried out. We as professional accountants, the CMA, are also celebrating our 25th anniversary, the Silver Jubilee. The chartered accountants are celebrating the 65th anniversary. They may not be aware that I was the president of the institute when we celebrated the Silver Jubilee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. So it's a long history. It's a long period. So two silver jubilees, I think maybe you are given a round of applause. It's something quite fitting, but I'm sure uh, you should know that these in the professional sense are done on a voluntary basis. Today it is very difficult to find people who do voluntary service, but we as professional accountants have been able to do it. And we can see the results maybe to the bigger public of this country. Even if the International Federation of Interest uh, in, uh, mention in the International Federation of Accountants, of which we are members, they speak of the public interest. I think that's the foremost thing that we have. So just to say a few things about CMA, because I know that uh, uh, some of you are aware of it, but some of you may be 
smiling at us, but when you go back, you do something different. So I just want to tell, because I must really respect the governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, uh, because when they advertise for management trainees, the local professional accounting body, CMA Sri Lanka, is included. So I must thank him, because uh, not only recognizing CMA, but recognizing the students who are following these programs and passing these exams, because a lot of them may be people who were not able to do these exams at a time when foreign exams were conducted. So we are there to serve the people of this country. One-tenth of the cost of a foreign program is something that is really creditable. So I just want to tell you something because some people think that although there is a cabinet decision, although there is a ministry circular, that they should not follow it. I think that's a very bad practice because especially if it is a state institution, they should honor those. So I think, uh, I thought that I must tell you of uh, our association with the International Federation of Accountants. You see, the International Federation of Accountants has what is called the stated member obligations. You cannot become a member without that. Number one is the quality assurance. This quality assurance really goes for the people who are doing audits on the assurance and related services. Then SMO2 on the international education standards. Now our educational standards are based on these for professional accountants and for aspiring professional accountants. Then international standards and other procurements and the IASB. Now that's another important area issued by the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board. So these are high standards that we are maintaining because the local uh, bodies do not know about this. Some of the CEOs, some of the chairmen, they do not know about it. They are just living in a world of their own. The International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants. I think this is one of the most important things. Because I had a recent interview uh, with a foreigner and he was asking me about the successes that I made when I was managing state corporations. So I was telling about the successes, how loss-making corporations were converted to profit-making, how the services were done to make the private sector active. Then at the end he told me, don't you think that honesty and integrity is a very important element? You see, supposing if I made a profit and put that money into my pocket, huh, then only I realize that that is the most important thing. Anyone might say that they are making profit, but it has to be done in, with honesty and integrity. So that's important. Then the most important thing, international public sector accounting standards and other announcements that have been given by the International Accounting Standards Board. Now, are we doing accrual accounting? Is government accounting based on cash accounting or accrual accounting? Do we have a balance sheet? Because when you speak of balance sheet, when a budget is presented, the government assets and liabilities should be placed before the members of the parliament. But that was not done. Only when we were in a very difficult situation, we had no money to repay the loans, then we found that we have over 100 billion loans. So I think the financial management, I'm sure that there were no finance, professionally qualified financial accountants in the public sector. Now that's another big drawback and that has to be corrected immediately. Then of course you have the investigation and discipline, the international financial reporting standards. So these are few things I mentioned because when we go and try to tell people about the high standards that we are maintaining, they are not really looking at these. So that's uh, one thing. But the other important things is the value creation. I mentioned about value creation because as professional accountants, the CMA, we conduct what's called the CMA Excellence in Integrated Reporting Awards. What is the real purpose of that? The purpose of that is to identify public quoted companies. I see the chairman of the Columbus Stock Exchange. They are combining with us and they show the value they are creating to the stakeholders. Today, no one is talking of profit. What is the value you are creating to stakeholders? Now, this is very important because you see, the IMF has said that we should go on a cost reflective or maybe on a cost uh, uh, based pricing mechanism. As a result of that, the petroleum industry that was running at a big loss, they were able to make profits. 
the electricity board were able to make profits. But there is another important thing in the electricity sector. Everyone thinks that this is a very simple industry, but it is really comprising so many components. If you think that we produce, I know that when I was chairman of the People's Bank, the biggest uh, customer of the bank was the, was the Ceylon Electricity Board. They had the highest deposits in this country. And do you know the raw material they were using at that time? It was water, free of charge. Then they ch changed to thermal, and then the strategies could not, would, were not changed. As a result, there was a big problem. Last year, they revised the prices. They said that we are going to have a severe drought, and then the prices have to be increased. What happened? At the end of the year, they made a massive profit, 70 to 80 billion profit, because there was a rainfall. So we need to see how we can get this free water, collect it, and keep it, and in order that we can prosper without wasting the valuable foreign exchange. So I think at one time, the electricity board did a pricing, uh, where the price was taken, and when the energy price is required, they made a full adjustment charge. I think if they did it even the previous year, there would have been no problem. But there is a very important thing as the cost is concerned. Today we find that although almost 80% of their material uh, is being used, there is no costing department. There is no separate costing cost records being maintained. If these are not maintained today, we can't do anything. The government has, I think, a really a big task to do because pricing has today become a very important element in all goods. Everyone says price is going up, but no one knows how the price is calculated. They must make it mandatory that everyone should maintain cost records, especially in the banks, they take loans. But if they don't make the cost records, if they don't maintain records, then it's a real problem. So I think these things, if they are done, then the accountants will also be able to play a major role. And today we come to the final new term of societal costing. I think Mr. Raman is here from India, where he told us of the importance of societal costing. Ultimately, all this price has to be paid by the society. So we are uh, playing, a, we have a role to play, but unfortunately, maybe people are not recognizing it, people are not doing it, but because very many, I know that as a financial accountant, the marketing people did not like it because we used to cut their budget. Similarly, no one will like the cost to be controlled. Well, you should know that today we are in this situation, the most important thing is to control uh, expenditure, control the costs, determine the actual costs, which means more and more professionals are required in this country. And then they must employ professionals, give them the real place in order that we can do it. So I'm sure that this will be all explained by our various speakers who are there, because we have a very good uh, program that have been lined up. And I'm sure that uh, the initial stages, the start would be given, because as I said, uh, by our governor of the central bank. I must also thank the uh, president of uh, CPA Australia. In that regard, I must thank uh, Professor Ho Yuki, uh, our own uh, uh, member, plus also uh, member of the, uh, the uh, advisory council, and also chairman of our academic advisory board, I think who's also a member of CPA Australia, and he invited uh, Professor Dale Pinto, and thank you very much for accepting your invitation, because today you have a very important topic that we have given you, because you are the professor in taxation law in, uh, at Curtin University, and today you are going to speak on taxation policy and practice for navigating economic stability towards dynamic growth. I think uh, this would be something that everyone is looking at because if you see, one of the ways that the government has increased the revenue is by taxation. So whether uh, we have other ways of collecting taxation, and especially the professionals, large number of them also live in the country as a result of high taxation. So I'm sure that your lecture would certainly tell us in which direction we should go and also how the professionals uh, can benefit uh, by this lecture. So I'm sure that uh, this uh, conference, we have laid down a large number of uh, sessions that are there. I must thank each and every one for the tremendous uh, support they have given us. All of them have uh, accepted our invitation, so let me thank all of them. 
And I must also thank the, uh, uh, those who are getting the awards today, the Business Excellence Awards, because they are some of the best uh, uh, people who have performed well in this country. And I must thank all of them. And I must also thank our council for all the support that they have given and the chairman of the technical committee for their support in making this conference a success. And as I said earlier, today we should not only talk, we should know how to put things into uh, action. And that is, uh, there is a term that you know, I don't know whether more you it is called the professional accountants in business. CMA professionals are professional accountants in business who will have to put things into action and show the results, the right results which will help this country to go forward. Thank you and all the best.